Hi. I am going to um, fill some pans with uh, gouache. Gouache is a um, non-transparent, ah! opaque watercolor. Watercolor type. Gouache um, is got a considerable history of 600 years or more. I have a lot of uh, just regular transparent water watercolors. Now, while these are similar, they're not the same. They can be used together. The difference between gouache and regular watercolor. Here's, here's a watercolor uh, by Holbein. I have some that are the exact same color. And uh, watercolors. So, for example, I have a brilliant pink. Here it is, right here, in watercolor. It starts with a W. But in gouache, brilliant pink starts with a G for gouache. Um, they're supposed to be the same color. Um, I have another one as well. Um, I think it's. Lilac, yes. I have lilac, watercolor, and lilac and gouache. I did a small um, test because I have the exact same brand in the same co color. Um, and it's right here. Uh, the G. 587 is this one right here, but the W317 is this one right here. I uh, wrote with black ink on my paper um, before I painted it, and as you can see in the gouache, it pretty much uh, covers it, not a complete coverage. Uh, with the watercolor one, it uh, uh, is transparent, and you can see what I, the little lines I made. Um, also, the difference in color. It's just not the same color at all. Um, I used uh, also um, the watercolor, this one here. But I also added in a uh, Windsor and Newton white gouache. And I got complete coverage here of my little lines I have underneath there somewhere. Coco, Coco, you're snoring. <laughs> my little pug dog. Anyway, um, the pink ones were also, uh, they're very similar in color, the two pink ones. This is the gouache, this is the watercolor. Uh, the gouache covered it somewhat. The watercolor did not cover it at all. Uh, here again is the watercolor, but with the white, Winsor and Newton. Um, that is this right here. Uh, I don't know if the designer gouache is uh, artist quality. I'm trying to stay away from student quality, but I think it is. Um, so I have a few. Well, actually, this box I've had for probably 20 years, <laughs> and I've never used it. Um, I'm going to. Today I'm going to use it, and I bought two more colors uh, in the pink range, like, you know, you know me. Don't growl. Be quiet. Anyway, um, I thought this was a really good test. It really, like, opened my eyes quite a bit. I plan on using uh, my gouaches with my watercolors, but mainly for little details. Um, I'm going to go ahead and... 
put them in pans and let them dry out as I do the watercolors. Um, there's no reason why that won't work just as well as a watercolor. Uh, I know a lot of uh, artists that use gouache do not fill pans. They just get it out of the tube as they need it. There's no reason why you can't also fill pans, I believe. We'll see how it goes. Um, but yes, I plan on using it for little details in my paintings and things like that. We'll see, you know, I may end up really getting into it. Um, but I think it's really, uh, really nice. Now I have a half pans and I have full pans. The half pans um, is exactly two of these would, would fill up the space of a full pan. Um, it's a little bit tad bigger. It feels tad bigger, but maybe not. Yeah, it seems just a little bit bigger. There is enough room in these um, these tins to put in the half pans fine. Um, you can take the tray out. This is the tray. Uh, you can take the paint out. Well, there goes that one. Took off. Let's see. Nothing happened, of course. It didn't fall out or anything. It's uh, completely dry. At least it's close to completely dry. Feels real silky. Um, you know, I put... I use mostly Daniel Smith. Um, although now I'm starting to get into the whole buying and other brands. Um, I don't even know if Daniel Smith has squash. I probably do. Um, but I don't have any. The 034 would be the last three digits on the Daniel Smith tube. I have other brands here too. Not very many though. Um, these are dry. They look wet, but they're not. Um, and I filled them quite full. Some of them lose their volume. This stayed very full. Uh, this one right here, this green, shrunk up big time. Let's let you see if you can see. It shrunk from the sides and here I can stick, you know, something in there between the wall and the paint itself. It also went down. It's like halfway down, as you can tell. I have a noisy little dog. <laughs> anyway, um... So these pans come out of these nice tins. These are Meaden tins. I have three different ones right now. The um, metal edge is curled, so it's not sharp. Um, they're not real lightweight. At least I don't feel like they are. Um, I have a, a black one. I have a pink one, and I have a turquoise blue one. I have a dark blue one coming. And I also have a periwinkle tin coming that's going to be for my new White Knights paints, which uh, should be interesting. Uh, lots of people really like the White Knights. They say they're very intense. I like intense colors myself. Um, I really don't want um, um, chalky colors and uh, poor quality. I just really like to have... Uh, nice uh, watercolors. It's quite an investment. They're not cheap by far. Um, I don't mind that they dry up and shrink this the way they do. That's fine. Um, let's see. I need my marker. Okay, I'll get it. It's because I don't want to mix them up with my watercolors. I want to know that these are gouache. So the G, five, 80, seven. Eight. 
you have to be careful when you open these up. I really like the Holbein because they have a big lid. They don't have a tiny lid like uh, Daniel Smith uses. Daniel Smith uses this really small lid by comparison. I mean, that's quite a difference there. Um, also, when you are grabbing it and everything, it's just so much nicer. And yes, you don't use the lid for very long. I mean, what are we talking about? Maybe a minute or two at the most. You're not going to be opening it up every day. It's not that important. Uh, but it is really helpful when you're older like I am. Um, the lid comes off very nicely. No explosions. It's not under pressure like sometimes happens. And when that happens, you can have a bomb go off and then you... You've got paint everywhere, and it really turns into a mess. So I start by filling up two corners. And then I rotate. I fill up another two. Shh, no growling. I know the big dogs are out there. They're barking. I can hear them. That's what's going on with her. No, you're not going to bark. I don't know what she thinks she's going to do, even though she barks. I guess it's because she's just a dog. <laughs> um, sometimes if I hit it, I can really make it go down very nicely. Uh, this did yesterday. I filled up... Um, some other ones that were watercolors. Here's another Holbein. This is the Brilliant Pink. Um, it's already went down inside of the, 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 the pan itself. And as you can see, this one's just a little bit fuller. But they both started off really close to being the same. You can't really tell the difference between the two, so the W and the G is so very necessary in my mind. Um, it's already dry. <laughs> I can already touch the surface. It, it's wet underneath, obviously, but, but it's real close to be, being pretty, you know, Steady, and I could probably travel with it already. Shh. Quiet. So, so this one was the lilac, which is very lovely. Um, I have lilac here in watercolor. And this is uh, the 317. These are the ones that are just not the same color, even though they have the same name. You can see this is the watercolor. This is the gouache. The gouache is more like a deeper, deeper, deeper color. Um, this seems more like it's got like more of a red in it or something like that. Anyway, so I'll put this over here. So we'll go on to our next, and this one is the Smalt Blue, and I really think this blue is pretty. So it's a G, five, seventy, three. And I cover my pen each time. I mean, I'm sure we all know this. They dry out. So it's helpful. I have a, my new pen on its way, and it's got stuck in customs. I am... Um, <clears throat> I'm not living in the U.S. I live in another country. And so I have a hard time getting things here. I... Uh, use a shipper forwarder person in Texas and uh, my dad is from Texas I'm American and uh, so everything gets forwarder to Texas and um, 
once I have enough stuff there, I uh, process it. And uh, the person in Texas crosses the Mexico border with it and puts it in FedEx for me. And then I get it down here. I have a hard time getting uh, art supplies, paints, and things. Um, it's really expensive. I pay uh, a lot of tax on these things, and s as well as fees. This blue is really lovely. I'm really happy with it. I think it's going to be a lovely color to play with. Um, I've slowly but surely been getting my um, supplies. And uh, I go to the art store here and they have nothing. It's just, there's no watercolors. Um, there's no brand, um, anything that's a brand. I've tried purchasing a little bit of the, like the local type of art supplies. And they're just, they're just not very nice. Um, I don't know if it's just the American in me, you know, it could be. <laughs> um, this is the one I'm doing next. This one is uh, John Brilliant, number two. I think this will be really good for uh, faces. But, um, so it's been hard. I decided I wanted to use a uh, artist quality and not use student quality no more. Um, I had been using a Gumbacher Academy watercolors and I've just not been very pleased with them. Um, I press both sides to make the paint go back down in I leave a good size uh, amount of air in there too to to help later on. This is really nice too. Lovely colors. Um, paper, inks, pencils, um, anything really that you would use. I uh, buy everything from Blick. Um, they do really, they've really done good by me. I've gotten a few things that ended up uh, bursting on me. Uh, I bought a, a small selection of acrylics to use to paint rocks and things to do, you know, some creative stuff with my little adopted daughter. She's 14. And, um, one of the little jars of, of acrylic paint um, just went everywhere. It was a mess. And uh, they replaced it. I was real pleased with that. And uh, one of the paint brushes I ordered, which was a black velvet, a nice paint brush. Not real expensive or anything, but, but considered nice, I think. Um, it was $9 or something like that for one paintbrush. Um, I have nicer ones, but this is a nice everyday brush, I think. And uh, it's made with both synthetic and natural hair. And uh, it looked like it had been used. And I was really disappointed. Um, it didn't come with its protector on it. Um, it was just, you know, pretty sad. And I let them know about it and they replaced both of them. So on this next shipment I'm getting from Texas, I will have um, that brush in it. And so I ended up with two brushes, one not so nice and one, well, at least I think this one will be brand new instead of uh, looking like it had been used. Maybe somebody returned it and didn't like it or who knows. So um, Blick has done pretty good for me. Um, I have a bunch of stuff in my cart right now. I just don't have the money to buy it. Um, I'm, you know, alone. I don't have a, 
really a support system or anything. I have a my mom here who I take care of who has a Alzheimer's and that's pretty tough. This is my relaxation. And um, I have my daughter, that's my natural daughter. She is uh, 37 now and she's here helping me out with my mom and with my adopted daughter who's 14. Yes, I took on a, a little chore there. Um, when I first adopted her, it wasn't just her, it was three. It was uh, two boys and a girl. The two boys have left home now, which is okay. They're, they're both doing okay. And um, I like this green. This green is ash green. That is really awesome. Um, so the girl is still here. The brothers, you know, come around and visit with their sister. And I'm hoping that she will um, do more because I uh, got a hold of her at a younger age. She's the baby. And uh, I think that we'll do okay with her. She seems to be getting with the program a little bit, I hope. And I've been exploring different things with her just to see what she likes, what she might like to do. Um, she's not wanting to really study a lot. This is aqua blue. Um, she's talking about being a doctor for a while because she broke her arm and went to the hospital and saw what it's like for doctors and got pretty inspired by that, especially the young men that were training to be doctors. And she liked those young men. <laughs> um, they were probably in their very early 20s and she was highly impressed by those boys. And they were definitely uh, pretty good looking too. <laughs> so that was really up her alley. So I'm not sure how this is going to work out. Um, my little pug dog is snoring again. I guess this is the number right here, 52, and this one is 28. But this is Windsor and Newton. So. There's another number right here at the bottom, and they're both different, so I'm not sure. It's sort of like a little bit of a scary thing there. Let's see, these are the same deal, just a designer squash, but this is just an older packaging. Um, let's see. Series one. These are made in England. Yeah, I don't really know how the numbering system for these are going to work. Got a little bit of a problem there. Okay. I'll probably wait on this whole set here until I can look it up. I will go ahead and do these two. Um, I will put a W and an N on it and a G. W N G. And this is a uh, Bengal Rose and this one is Brilliant Violet. I'll look it up in a little bit here so I can do things better. Uh, this has a pretty nice lid on it. The lid is not quite as nice. No, it's, it's, it's right there, I guess. We'll see how this does when we open it up. Ooh, trying to escape. Let's see. Oh, air bubble. I don't like air bubbles. It makes me feel like I'm getting sheeted.
Wow, isn't that something? That color is just wow. It's just so beautiful. Really filled up the pan nicely. Um, it's not as thick. So, so answered new. Wash. And this is the brilliant violet. That's really nice. This has air bubbles in it too. I always feel cheated, you know. I bought a, a lot, a lot, not a lot, a lot of uh, Daniel Smith watercolors on eBay. It was 48 tubes, 49 tubes, something like that. And um, they all had these really big air bubbles in them, and I had the suspicion that whoever sold them to me somehow took out pain. And I mean, it might sound silly, but you know, it's not a little bit of money. Wow, that violet is really lovely. And I'll do the white too. Why not? I got the. I'm gonna use this, the older tube just to start using it first. So. These tubes are about 20 years old. Um, doesn't look like it's even a week old. <laughs> Comes out real nice, real nice and smooth. And there it is. So, We did nine pens, and uh, it's a nice range of colors. They're very pretty. Um, two different blues, an aqua blue, this the smalt blue. I think that's what it was. Yeah, smalt blue. Um, this is the lilac, which is very lovely. This is the, the small blue, which I think is very, very nice. Um, I really like this blue. This is the, the John's Brilliant, or is that how you say that? John, it's J-A-U-N-E, and I know it's French. Uh, number two, but I don't speak French, so. I know this is a good color for doing complexions, faces, skin tones. Um, this is the brilliant pink, which is really actually very lovely. This is the Ash green, which I find very nice. It's uh, almost got a blue tint to it in a way. It's really a strange color. So we'll see what we think of that. And then the aqua blue. So there's two blues. And then we have the, this really, really, it's like, wow. This is the Bengal Rose. 
it's really something else. It's a Winsert and Newton. Um, if you're into flowers and stuff, that's like, wow. And then we have this uh, brilliant violet. And the brilliant violet is uh, just really yummy. So I have two violet types, two pink types, two blue types. Um, I probably could paint something rather nice with just these colors only. And uh, I already used one of my really old. Uh... Now this squash tube, I know I opened it at one time, I think. Uh, this is ivory black. I don't usually have black in my watercolors, but with gouache, you paint um, dark to light. In watercolors, you usually do light to dark. So, because they're transparent. If you put down a really dark transparent, a lighter transparent isn't gonna really show up over it very easily. Um, with a gouache, if you put, because it's opaque, you wanna put down your dark colors first. So it's, it's a different thing, you know, but I think that if you really think about it intuitively, it makes sense um, that that's how these are. So um, you would uh, just, you know, be careful to know that. Uh, gouache, if you're going to combine it with a watercolor, I think, um, uh, I don't know for sure, but I think that in my case, I plan on using it for details and using fine, fine, real fine brushes to do details because it's opaque um, to help make certain things pop. Um, but at the same time, if you have a a lighter colored gouache, you could go over it with a dark watercolor that's transparent. And that probably would be pretty nice too. So you'll want to think about those things. Um, you know, there's nothing that's set in stone. I'm sure I could be wrong on some aspects of this. Um, but at the same time, maybe I'm right. But we'll see. Um, I hope you guys enjoy seeing me fill my full pans of gouache. Um, as you can see, each tube probably would fill a pan about four times. These have uh, 15. Um, 15 milliliters, is that what it is? Yeah, I think so. And um, these are, yeah, it's milliliters. Here it is. I think it's milliliters. Oh, I don't know. Anyway, just ignore me. I, I may not know what I'm talking about. Um, this is about half of an ounce. These tubes are. And they'll fill up a pan about four times, I think, approximately. Um, they don't need to be full. They, you know, they'll go down like they did here in my pan. Um, you can see here some of my yellows have went down quite a bit. Um, they're about half full. That's enough paint to paint a lot of paintings. So I don't worry about filling them up to the edge. Um, these are, you know, my own use. I don't really have a reason to fill them up more. Sometimes they crack like this did right here. It's, it's cracked. This went into the pan real lumpy to begin with and it stayed that way. While others like this one uh, laid down very nicely. These did the reds. Um, some colors don't, 
this is one of those white knight brushes. Um, it is a number six. I think it's probably one of the nicer brushes. I have other brushes. I think there's one in here too in this black too. Mm -hmm. This brush I bought here, it's from here. And this is a Roden. And this is a number five. So, you know, this is along the lines of a six. It wasn't very expensive at all. It was very reasonable. Um, I have my paints in these tins because I, I really want to take trips and go to the beach and um, go places and paint. And this is really the best way to do it to me. Um, here's another brush. This is a Ludum Art. This is a number four. Um, it's not a very nice brush. Uh, it's pretty full. Um, it doesn't have a point. Uh, for some things, it's you know would be useful. These are my dual chrome, mostly from Daniel Smith. They have mica in them. Uh, this is the continuation of my other two regular colors without mica. But these have mica in them. Um, they do lots of really neat stuff over colors. If you paint with them on a plain sheet of paper, you don't really see much happening. It's when you put it on top of another color. And um, I'm real nice. I'm real, real pleased with them. I'm uh, real pleased with all of my paints and uh, plan on doing lots of little tests with them. And so we'll see how it goes. I hope you guys have a, a lovely evening and um, I hope you enjoyed uh, listening to me.